The board members are leaving Uber like rats on a sinking ship. Xbox, Twitter, Uber, Postmates, oh, no. Netflix, MoviePass, Lyft, Google, Google, Facebook, Facebook, eBay, DoorDash, Apple, Amazon, Airbnb, The Entrepreneur. Hey everyone, this is Kevin, The Entrepreneur. And several months ago, I predicted that within a year of the Uber IPO, virtually all of the board members on Uber would be replaced or gone. Personally, because I felt who would want to have their name associated with such a toxic company. And also, I personally predicted that the stock would fail, that the company would continue to lose money, and that the board members would essentially be there just to, you know, cash out and go home. And that appears to be the case. So far, there have been several board members who have left there. Other key executives have left. And now we have two more. Two board members are leaving, and one of them you probably won't be very familiar with, truthfully. I'm not very familiar with him. And the other one you're probably very familiar with. That That's Matt Kohler, who, again, I'm not, who I'm not very familiar with, and you probably aren't either. I'm not going to assume, but I assume. Well, I guess I'm going to assume. But the other one is Ariana Huffington, and she you most likely have heard about. Because Ariana Huffington was, is a very successful businesswoman. Uh, she actually founded the Huffington Post, which is now called HuffPost, uh, which I used to work for. And, you know, she was also Travis Kalanick's uh, most loyal um, defender on the board. In fact, it is rumored that she was the one who convinced him to resign rather than let the public spectacle of his very, very big downfall play out in public any longer than it needed to. So this is going to be very interesting for the board going forward. Let's look at this article. Um... Uber, which has been trying to find its footing on Wall Street since going public in May, will be taking its next steps forward without two of its more notable board members. In filings with the Securities and Exchange Commission late Wednesday, Uber said Ariana Huffington, founder of the Huffington Post and Benchmark Capital General Partner Matt Kohler this week, stepped down from the ride-hailing Giants Board of Directors. Both Kohler and Huffington officially left the Uber board on Wednesday. Now, what this does confirm is I know that several months ago it was rumored that Huffington had left the board because she used to be very public with Uber. She used to be one of its biggest defenders. And there were rumors that she had been speaking counsel about what to do with Uber's growing controversies. And it was rumored that, well, she had been encouraged to give up her board on the seat. Obviously, now that this has come out, we can confirm that that did not happen. She kept her board seat. However, she has been distancing herself from the company. So this really isn't too surprising. Uber said in both filings that Huffington's and Kohler's departures weren't due to any disagreements with company management, other directors, nor any of Uber's policies or business strategies. Now, I don't know how much I believe that because there's always disagreements on the Uber board. As far as I'm aware, we talk about it quite frequently, but maybe there weren't. Maybe this was a case where they wanted to leave the board and they're going to be selling their stake in the company, especially now that the stock is finally above the IPO price. So they might actually pocket a little bit of extra money than they were anticipating. Um, Huffington, who was chief executive of Thrive Global, a San Francisco-based company working on solutions to alleviate employee stress and burnout, called her tenure on Uber's board, quote, an unforgettable three-year ride, but said that her Thrive Global responsibilities had taken precedent over her role at Uber. I'm sure that's a very convenient excuse. Quote, given Thrive's growth, it has become clear to me that I will no longer be able to give my Uber board duties the attention they deserve, Huffington said in a statement with Uber's SEC filings. I'm grateful to have been able to work alongside my fellow board members. Kohler's departure leaves Uber without a representative from Benchmark, once Uber's largest shareholder outside the company. Kohler said he had, quote, the privilege of being part of the Uber journey since Benchmark's first invested in Uber 10 years ago. He had been an Uber board member since 2017. The board departures follow that of Ryan Graves, Uber's first employee, who stepped down from the company's board shortly after its IPO in May. Noticing a pattern here. Uber went public on May 10th at $45 a share, but has only rarely reached that price level again over the last two months. Uber's shares were off by almost 1% at $43.41 Thursday morning. With the departures of Huffington and Kohler, Uber has nine board members, including Chief Executive Dar Karhashi, co-founder and former CEO Travis Kalanick, and co-founder Garrett Camp, who we recently talked about, bought that $72 million mansion. Uber didn't immediately respond to, to a request for additional comments about Wednesday's resignations and what, if any, plans the company has to replace Huffington and Kohler on the board. 
I'm certain, especially since I always have the feeling Kalanick never really wanted to give up control of the company, that whoever fills those seats will be hotly, hotly contested. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to be perfectly honest. I am not a fan of Ariana Huffington. I, I'm not. You could probably figure out why. Clearly, I don't agree with her politically most of the time. And I think she's kind of a sleazy businesswoman. I think there's a. it's no accident that her and Travis Kalanick were like this. I think they both have the step step on everyone's toes, backstab if you can, win at all costs attitude that I think is detrimental to companies. Look, I'm not against companies wanting to be successful. Clearly, I encourage it. But you can do it without being a basically a criminal. <laughs> Well, okay, they haven't, I don't, I don't know, well, they have not been accused of a crime, but the way they steal from the drivers and the passengers, you know, seems pretty criminal to me. Anyway, I, I'm not, I don't think Uber drivers are going to notice too much anything different from the company. I doubt new board members will help the drivers. None of the people on the board are for the drivers. They just aren't, and we need to know, acknowledge that. But, again, I don't really like her too much, and she was Kalanick's biggest partner, so... Who knows what's going to happen? It's just going to be interesting to see who's going to get to replace those board members. Is Kara Shahi going to make the final call, or is Travis Kalanick going to get people that are loyal to him on the board? It's going to be very fascinating to watch. But anyway, that one's going to be where we. That's going to be where we end this one. This one's going to be a fairly short one. So, what do you folks think? Does anyone here have an opinion on this? I would love to know. Comment below, like, favorite, share, subscribe. If you enjoy my videos, consider becoming a Patreon member. It's totally optional, of course, but even as little as $1 a month goes a long way to helping the channel run smoothly and you get access to my Patreon's exclusive blog. Also, if gas prices get you just a little down, check out the GetUpside app below. It's totally free, but you get cash back on every gas purchase. If you want more content from me that's um, different from rideshare-related news, check out my other channels, Kevin T. Rodriguez, uh, The Entrepreneur Vlogs, and Autograph Hound. And finally, if you want to talk to me or other fellow rideshare drivers, check us out at the Entrepreneur Hangouts on Facebook. And as always, flame responsibly. Have a good one.